بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سو ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو اسٹارٹ ود ممبرین سیپریشنس اینڈ ان دس لیکچر آئی ول انٹروڈیوس یو ود دا ممبرین سیپریشن دین وی ہیو ٹو پروسیڈ مین فارورڈ اینڈ آئی تھنک اوور آل دس ٹاپک ول بی کورڈ ان لائک فور ویکس and uh, this is chapter 14 from your textbook 1414 uh, before this uh, just to recall we have discussed liquid liquid extraction in detail and that was chapter 8 from your textbook uh, some part we covered from chapter 4 that was also related to liquid liquid extraction Uh, and then we switch back again to the chapter 8. So, chapter 8 is not complete. The topics which we have covered are included in your uh, main this subject. Uh, that's uh, uh, some parts are, are some topics are there which are not part of your syllabus. So, you can skip those while others which I have discussed in the lectures uh, you have to uh, go through those topics and solve problems related to those topics. and uh, this is chapter 14 which we are going to start today and i hope so i mean more or less complete chapter will be covered during these four weeks inshallah uh, so in today's lecture we will start from very basic stuff that was separation through barriers so uh, i will just go back to the lecture 1 and 2 when we started this uh, subject in the start of semester and I will I mean, recall few things from there and then we have to jump towards membrane separation processes. Uh, so, let us start with this. Uh, so, uh, as I said in the start of semester you have uh, I mean studied Uh, some basic separation techniques that uh, actually when you go for separation they can be classified or they can be categorized into four uh, separate categories or four separate techniques and uh, mean when you talk uh, generally about them you can classify them in four categories and those categories involve first one was separation by phase creation and in separation by phase creation this means that you have to create a new phase uh, that provides you separation of one component from the other for example here you can see these cold drinks in these uh, i mean this is very common example which you know which we have also discussed in this what happens when you open the i mean this bottle uh, actually you release the pressure you reduce the pressure and due to reduction in this pressure gas CO2 is evolved from this liquid CO2 is actually filled with the pressure inside liquid and when you will open it uh, due to this change in the condition due to this uh, change in pressure uh, this gas evolve and that's formation of a new phase that's uh, that was dissolved here in the liquid but now that is released in the form of gas this was phase creation and uh, related to this you have uh, discussed or you know the technique commonly used in the industry is distillation in which uh, you provide uh, a high temperature and with the help of that you mean vaporize some part of your feed while other is in the form of liquid and they get separated so here when you are vaporizing something you are creating a new phase so next is separation by phase addition uh, separation by phase addition here you will separate something by adding a new phase uh, for example here uh, very common example or uh, simple example you can see is like when we add hot water to the I mean this tea beads or tea leaves so what happens uh, some something is extracted from this solid beads towards water and uh, I mean uh, similarly there are some other techniques on industrial scale which you have discussed and uh, they involved actually uh, absorption in absorption you remember that uh, we discussed that topic in detail and you always introduce some uh, solvent 
for removal of some components from the feed and then uh, after this we discussed I mean in last few weeks liquid liquid extraction. So, what we were doing there we were introducing some new liquid and that was like phase new phase addition and with the help of that we are separating some components of our feed uh, that was solute which you were uh, I mean uh, extracting with the help of externally introduced solvent. As well one technique uh, which still we have to discuss at the end of this semester and that is leaching solid liquid extraction and this example of uh, T is actually the solid liquid extraction because we are extracting something from the solid that is bead with the help of some liquid. And then there is separation through external field in which you apply some external field and you get separated some mixture. So, in this example uh, which you commonly know from the FSC class the, this uh, being used here and uh, some technique uh, which on industrial scale is used called electrophoresis I think we discussed in the start of semester uh, which is usually used in uh, somehow nuclear industry I think and uh, they are used uh, they are externally introduced using some field. So, here external introduced field is magnetic field and uh, with the help of this you can uh, just separate iron fillings from sand. So, here you did not add any like new phase you did not created any phase, but what you did you applied any external field external force and with the help of that you have separated a mixture. Uh, and then there was uh, last type 4 technique or uh, fourth category and that was called separation by barrier or you can call it separation through barrier. Uh, in that uh, we discuss various example I have in the new slide uh, next slide. So, here you can see these are called filters some are air filter while other are oil filter uh, we discuss this example there. So, in this uh, what happens actually you are separating some components from the others with the help of some barrier. For example, if you talk about air filter what happens air which is uh, going to enter to your system to the engine. Uh, so, that is uh, mean we just uh, purify that air we remove some dust particle other uh, mean some uh, uh, something like if there are some particles which can go to engine and can damage that they are removed with the help of this uh, filter. So, when air will pass through air will go through, but those solid particles are trapped inside this barrier. As well if you look at these oil filters, so oil filters uh, we remove uh, some solid particle present in the oil. Uh, so, it did not damage the parts of engine through which this oil is being circulated. So, when you will pass that oil through this these oil filter contain such structure inside that uh, that will allow only oil to pass through while if there are some solid of some specific size they will be trapped inside this filter. Uh, so, I mean clean oil will be moving towards your moving parts. Uh, so, we have to actually take this separation by barrier and discuss in detail. So, through separation through barrier yes so before that I jump towards next slide. Uh, so, if I talk about the industrial example about this. So, that is membrane application and there are various type of membrane application which come under the category of separation by barrier. Uh, so, uh, there were few common example which were discussed in the start. So, you can see here uh, this example which you commonly use in uh, lab mean when you are separating uh, some solid uh, you go for crystallization and for various analysis in uh, chemistry when you go through this. So, uh, here what we do we will just pass um, in the liquid and solid. Uh, some I can say mixture through this. So, when it will pass through this you know that uh, solids are retained on the surface and liquid will pass through. So, this is just separation through barrier we did not introduce any new uh, in phase we did not create any phase, but we did uh, we did not apply any external force here at least in this case. Uh, so, what you did you just provided one barrier and separation takes place. Uh, then these water filters you commonly know that uh, they are used and uh, here they actually contain some the filters of various sizes or various material actually and uh, uh, they capture uh, the solids of various uh, 
uh, sizes through the water so that we can we can get at the end clean water so this is again the separation through barrier in which you are applying one barrier which is a filter and uh, based on particle size it is making separation and then uh, this is uh, i think air filter so in this when you pass air through this uh, air will just get separated because air will pass through but uh, the solid particle are untrained on the surface of this either uh, I mean inside or outside so those uh, I mean it will depend on the direction of the flow from where you are uh, flowing this uh, air to in which direction suppose I am just uh, air is entering from inside and leaving or pushed outside so all those particles will be entrained inside and if uh, you are pushing air from outside towards inside so here then solid particle will be uh, I mean entrained on its surface. So, all these are example of separation through barrier, but they are being used on small scale. So, if we have to talk about on large scale industrial scale, so then there is example of actually membranes that is uh, I mean separation through a barrier membrane can be considered as a barrier uh, which will allow the separation of various components of the feed. Uh, so, let us look at this uh, I mean membrane separation. Like when uh, we say membrane separation as I said in last slide that this is separation through some barrier. Uh, so, that barrier is working in such a way that it is selective towards some components or it is like selective semi permeable barrier. Uh, so, membrane actually can be defined as selective semi permeable barrier that separates a feed mixture. Uh, I mean into its component or you can say generally speaking if I just say there are only two fluids inside my feed. So, membrane is a semi permeable barrier that will separate two fluids into two streams. Uh, so, this semi permeable something which uh, is uh, like selective for some components which allow some components to pass through while other will be retained on its surface. Uh, so, this you can compare now with those which we have just discussed that they were also allowing some of the component to pass through while others were retained. For example, water filter that allows only water to pass through while other solids or some impurities present in that water are just uh, mean retained on the surface of filters. Uh, uh, so, here uh, the same methodology will be applied. So, overall when we say that uh, I mean feed in the gas is separated into uh, two parts like actually one part will one part will pass through the membrane while other part will be retained on the surface of membrane. Uh, so, they are given some specific names in the field of membrane uh, separation. So, they are called actually retentate and permeate. Retentate is that part of the feed that does not pass through the membrane is named as retentate something which is left over which is uh, not allowed to pass through is called retentate. Uh, and while there is something called permeate, so permeate is that passes through the membrane if you look at the meaning of this word permeate pass through uh, that will something will pass through the membrane that will be called as permeate. So, when our feed will be entering to this system for example, here you can see that uh, we have a feed and that is a mixture of like here two components uh, it is not necessary sometimes we can have more than two components. So, our membrane will be selective for some of those and we have to select such membrane that uh, it I mean it gives us separation. Uh, for example, here I mean two fluids are present and in this feed when you bring in contact with the membrane. Uh, so, through this membrane some of those will pass through for example, this is selective more selective towards like uh, these blue colors uh, I mean chemical or you can say blue color component. So, those will pass through this membrane while other which are retained on its surface they are called retentate. So, they will just leave from here as such. Uh, so, overall one thing you can observe even from this figure that this is not like 100 percent selective toward one component as well. Uh, one of the component which we want to completely separate is not being done here. Uh, overall because you can see in retented some of blue uh, I mean component are present while other silver some are uh, some has passed through this. So, actually when we will talk about the various membrane there I mean uh, construction uh, material of uh, I mean material 
of which membranes are actually synthesized. So, you will see that we have to look for something called selectivity. So, here I mean its selectivity I mean this membrane is highly selective for one of the component, but it also some other will also pass through this uh, I mean uh, overall maybe another question can uh, raise in your mind here uh, because uh, if we see these blue color component as he has shown here they are large in size while other silver one are I mean small in size. So, in this case if it is separating based on particle size overall you, what you will see that definitely something uh, I mean which is small in size should have passed through this while other should stay on the surface which are large in size, but here opposite is happening. But actually these membranes are uh, more than just size separation some other phenomena also involve here. So, which we will discuss later on. So, overall just remember here up to here that these membranes are selective for some component they allow some of the component to pass through while others did not pass through this. And one thing here actually this will also differentiate it from the filters, filters which we use they just uh, are working based on size mean uh, any component which is large in size will be retained on their surface and small will pass through. So, here uh, some other phenomena will also involve. So, that differentiate actually uh, these membrane from common simple filters. So, overall here uh, I mean this is schematic from your textbook. So, that presents like your feed is entering to the system and then there is a membrane this barrier which is a membrane. Uh, so, this is some module through this feed is entering from one uh, end and it is leaving on the other end. So, overall through this module uh, we can see that like uh, this uh, some of the component is just passing through and that is retained like rejected uh, something which is not passed through the membrane while other which will just pass through some of the component will pass through this and that is called permeate. So, here he has uh, indicated something sweep uh, I mean this uh, is to uh, for example, sometimes you have to remove the permeate from the system. So, you can remove with the help of some external aid. So, it did not accumulate here in the system and uh, like sweep this word you know that when you just pass something to or uh, you remove with the help of something. So, just uh, this is optional sometime in some system actually we have to remove from our system from our assembly the permeate that it did not accumulate as well it is uh, mean, uh, mean passage is easy through the system. So, you can sweep with the help of some external aid for example, if uh, there is uh, some gas being accumulated here. So, maybe maybe I can bring some some of the gas uh, of similar gas which is uh, highly purified. So, I can push with the help of that or sometime if it is liquid. So, we can also I mean bring from here some uh, pressurized liquid. So, that can help as a sweep that will help us I mean with the help of this pressure your permeate will leave from this system. Uh, so, overall uh, when you go through the membranes, what they do actually membrane separation this uh, mi this separate actually mixture of two or more component. Uh, so, that is partially separated by the means of semi permeable membrane or a membrane through which some species travel faster than other. As I have uh, mean told you in the last slide that uh, you see here I mean it is not only two components sometime in the feed there can be more than two component, but here our purpose will be to separate one or two of those uh, it will depend on the application we will look. Uh, uh, so, there can be sometime more than one or two component for example, if I give you the example these membrane are also used for purification of water like in the start some somehow we talked about this like desalination is one of the technique in which what you do you just uh, purify the sea water with the help of membrane that is called desalination. Uh, so, in that case uh, I mean as you know that if you take the sea water that contains water and hundreds of other uh, mean impurities. So, although we remove some of those before bringing it to the membrane, but uh, uh, still when you will bring it to the membrane that will be not only water and one of the component like one of the salt you know that there are various salts present in the water. For example, there can be NaCl, MgCl2 mean and some other like uh, KCl and I mean it will depend on from where you are taking the water. So, 
uh, there can be as well some other chemicals present inside this for example, you can say organic uh, hydrocarbons are present. So, there can be more than two components, but this membrane which we are going to use actually this will be selective for some of those component it will not reject or it will not mean allow all of those to pass through or maybe it will not separate all of them in like one membrane one module due to this you will see when later we discuss this topic. So, uh, sometimes you have more than one membranes in series. So, to remove various component or if you can have more than one means setup in series. Uh, so, you can remove more than one component from your system. Uh, as well uh, something one thing mentioned here is partially separated. So, uh, this is uh, like uh, not 100 percent separation definitely few of those are still left with each other like uh, here you can see somehow in this figure overall just look at this that this was a mixture this was the feed and if, if this feed is passing through this. So, here somehow size based separation is taking place and small size particle are passing through this. But as well you can see that some large size particle are also passed through this membrane. So, this is uh, like partially separated not 100 percent separated. So, overall your solvent and some solute particle are there. So, solvent will uh, pass through uh, more or less almost all, but other solute will also pass through. But at the same time uh, this is permeate if you will look at the retentate your retentate will also contain some of the solute mean 100 percent solute is not separated. So, that is called partial separation. Uh, then uh, if you look at these membrane mean they are nothing, they are more uh, just nothing more than a thin interface thin uh, mean like you can see that has very small diameter actually uh, and uh, very sm small like sheet you can consider it something like page uh, as I told you earlier somehow uh, somewhere that uh, they can be considered as a one page. Uh, like as you you have seen filter paper actually they are just uh, that, ca that can be treated as a membrane, uh, but here actually membrane assembly is not that simple that is not only one sheet or one page uh, they also involve uh, some others I uh, mean uh, structures which are used for helping or maybe supporting your this thin sheet. Uh, so, actually what happens on the surface of this uh, thin interface, uh, interface is actually that point where uh, something uh, uh, separation is taking place or some of the two, two components are just uh, I mean getting closer to each other or coming in contact with each other uh, like you have seen already some we call interface that uh, there is an interface, interface is actually uh, in liquid liquid extraction when we were talking about this. So, that is uh, I mean some two, two of those uh, components are coming in contact with each other as we were bringing uh, our feed and solvent in contact with each other. So, some interface there will be some boundary actually uh, where uh, their contact is taking place. So, here uh, this is a uh, thin interface through which actually separation is taking place that moderates the permeation of chemical species in contact with it. Uh, so, permeation uh, this is from permeate. So, that allows or that moderates the passage of some chemical species which are coming in contact with this. Suppose uh, here we have some of the similar example some feed is uh, moving through this uh, you will look at this membrane later like there are various type of setup or assemblies uh, through which we can pass our feed and can get it separated. So, overall some of those component while this feed is passing through this in this direction. So, some of those component will travel or will pass through will permeate through this membrane this is membrane barrier. So, they will go on the opposite side and uh, that is uh, called then permeate because something which has passed through the membrane is named as permeate and while other uh, which are not passed through this and they are still left as such when it is leaving this system. So, that is called retentate and uh, here you can see that this membrane again has allowed some of the red color particle to pass through this membrane. Uh, overall uh, this is highly selective or more selective towards this blue color, but some of these red are also uh, I mean uh, pass through this. Uh, so, overall when you look at uh, these membranes mean these membrane uh, as we are giving some feed and we are getting some permeate and retentate. So, that can be like uh, 
uh, usually they are usually liquid or gas mean when we apply this membrane for separation so they are commonly being used for liquid or gas separation actually I uh, mean here um, they are not commonly used uh, for uh, somehow you can say solid separation so they are used for liquid or gases but here what will happen in liquid actually you can have various uh, chemical uh, like for example there are salts so you know the salts are solid but when they are dissolved in the liquid so that they are the part of that liquid stream actually. Uh, so, as well some other chemicals suppose uh, as we were talking about the water. So, if water contain those organic chemical uh, like benzene, toluene some of uh, those are present in this. So, they are part of this liquid stream. So, uh, when you talk about the gases in gases like we can have a uh, mixture of uh, natural gas when I think we talked about this in the start as well that uh, when you I get this na natural gas from the ground. So, it is not only CH4, it is a mixture of various other species like there will be CH4, there will be as well water inside this, some other gases like CO2 and H2S are present. So, uh, I mean that water that can be removed from this in the form of condensate, you can just condense and uh, mean uh, when you will reduce the temperature definitely water will condense out that will be separated. But these gases now as I said this is CH4. Uh, it contains some of other hydrocarbon like uh, it also contain you know like uh, after methane, ethane and but, uh, somehow uh, propane are there. H2S and CO2 are the major impurities which need to be removed from this. So, this is the gas mixture when we will pass through the membrane. So, that membrane should be selective such so that I mean it separates these uh, that can be separated in two ways like either uh, you pass that gas through this membrane and it allows only hydrocarbon like CH4 and some other hydrocarbon to pass through or this can be somehow the opposite way that that allows only like CO2 and H2S to pass through and uh, I mean then this gas uh, which is uh, like uh, your component of uh, like advantage or you can say which is beneficial to us. So, that will just leave as a retentate. Uh, so, Finally, overall you can say that like uh, these feed retentate or permeate all will be usually the liquid or gas inside the system. Uh, but sometime you can have them as a like solid finally suppose when you look at reverse osmosis and in reverse osmosis that is that's actually technology which use membrane and that is used for purification of water. Uh, so, in that case uh, actually you will see that your uh, solids are rejected uh, the, sorry salts are rejected as a solid. So, sometime you can have them as a solid, but most of the time you will be looking that all these three mean feed retentate and permeate are actually liquid or gases, uh, but that is not necessary as I have given you the example of salts. So, if salts are rejected at then from the water actually when concentration will increase uh, their salts concentration. So, because you are removing them from the water and uh, when you are removing the water you know that they will start uh, crystallizing and they will appear as a solid. Uh, this barrier which is being used as a membrane is often thin non porous and polymeric film. Uh, I mean when we will talk about the material of uh, these membranes. So, you will see that they are commonly most most of those membrane are most of those are poly polymeric, but uh, at the same time they can be all uh, sometime as uh, mean like uh, ceramic or metallic material membrane. Even sometime you will see that they can be in the form of liquid gel. Uh, so, that can be also used as a membrane. Uh, so, they also come in like two categories like uh, this is based on material of construction like they can be polymeric, ceramic, me metal or even liquid gel, uh, but other based on their like uh, porous or non porous structure. Some of them can be like non porous, I uh, mean they do not have any pores, 
while other are somehow porous I mean they have pores and uh, based on uh, when membrane will be porous you know that separation will be mainly based on size separation I mean uh, if it is porous and pores will be of some specific size so they will allow some of the component to pass through while other will be retained but as I have uh, told you in the first slide where uh, we have seen that through one membrane even that membrane is more selective towards large size particles so there you will see uh, later on that actually separation is not taking place based on size those membrane are totally non porous they did not contain any pores, but uh, overall separation will take place through some other phenomena which we will uh, mean see that that is something called diffusion. So, diffusion through the membrane takes place non porous membrane. So, uh, through those membrane actually it is not based on the size it is based on diffusion mean some component can easily diffuse through that membrane can pass through that membrane uh, and uh, uh, while other will not pass through uh, that is not based on size actually that is its diffusivity through that membrane material. Uh, so, next I mean uh, when you look at these membrane and uh, we are looking for specific selectivity. Selectivity mean, uh, mean something which we want to selectively remove with the help of this. So, to maintain selectively barrier must not dissolve, deform, disintegrate or break. Uh, it means actually your membrane should be stable, it should not be like uh, a reactive, it should not dissolve inside your feed. I mean it should not break, uh, if it will break definitely I mean this will not be working properly as well if it dissolve some of its component are uh, remove with the feed they become part of the feed uh, in the form of retentate or permeate. So, that will be actually the damage. So, uh, in order to avoid that I mean that membrane uh, if you want purity you want good separation. So, your membrane should not have like these kind of problems. Uh, like uh, optional sweep which we have seen somewhere inside the figure which I have told you that this is from your textbook. So, optional sweep we were using that was being used to facilitate removal of the permeate. So, uh, I mean we have seen at this uh, at that time I have told you that you can just pass some liquid or gas through this system uh, uh, at the high pressure. So, that it will push the permeate which is accumulated inside system that can be easily removed. Uh, so, overall when you look at these membrane separation actually uh, I mean the products which uh, you are getting here in the uh, from the feed they are usually miscible like uh, what does this mean? Uh, I mean they are usually soluble uh, they are uh, I mean in the form of one phase. For example, uh, I mean uh, here you, we have talked about one thing like gas natural gas and natural gas is in the form of uh, like mixture of gases. Uh, so, they all are miscible with each other they will be they will appear in the form of one phase actually I mean you cannot distinguish between them. So, when you will pass through this membrane uh, the products which you are getting they are now separated like one is permeate and other is retentate, but initially they were the two products which you are getting in the form of permeate and retentate they were miscible. I uh, mean uh, when they are miscible, uh, so the this mm, the problem actually we have to separate them. So, that can be separated with the help of anything, but in membrane like you when you are looking at this they are usually miscible with each other. Uh, so, they can be separated with this membrane into two component and then they will be like just separated out. Uh, they will become somehow we can say immiscible uh, not immiscible in terms of this separation actually they will get separated. Uh, the separating agent here is semi permeable barrier actually when you just compare this technique with the other techniques which you have talked about. Uh, so, you can see that separating agent always we look at some separating agent like if uh, you are looking at uh, uh, phase creation separation. So, in which 
the phase is created with the help of uh, like maybe temperature or pressure as we have seen some cold drink. So, when you open the lid, so what happens actually you are reducing the pressure. So, here your pressure is the separating agent as well if uh, in distillation you heat the feed. So, there the heat the temperature is your separating agent. In liquid liquid extraction you have seen that uh, our externally introduced liquid was the separating agent inside uh, absorption you remember that some externally introduced solvent uh, which was absorbing some of the component uh, through the I mean feed that was separating agent. So, here actually separating agent is some semi permeable barrier and that is membrane. Uh, so, here in membrane separation sharp separation is often difficult sharp separation as we have seen sharp separation mean mean uh, as you have seen that 100 percent separation I mean uh, that is a bit difficult uh, because membrane will allow some of the components other component will also to pass through which we do not want actually I mean they are not like 100 percent removing and this problem exists in more or less all techniques actually you cannot get 100 percent separation or uh, if you are looking for very high purity or such stuff may you go for more than one stages that we also talked about this like in liquid liquid extraction as well mean in absorption or distillation you know that we have more than one stages. So, again here in membrane separation uh, due to this we can have sometime more than one stages or more than one module to uh, pass uh, your feed through this that you can get better separation. So, when we look at the membranes actually uh, they are being used in industries now mean many industries are using these membranes on commercial scale mean they are being used. Uh, but if we look at the past actually mean membrane has suffered from various problem and uh, there were actually four common problems which membrane were facing and those include actually they were too unreliable. Uh, too unreliable mean uh, they were not giving very good separation sometimes they are performing well sometimes they are not uh, as well they have some problems uh, like uh, they were too slow because this is the barrier as uh, we, we have seen that if uh, membrane is sometimes porous sometimes non porous membrane can be used. So, if you are using like some of non porous definitely mean there are no pores and now you have to separate two components. So, it uh, works somehow like uh, slowly as well uh, you can have like they are too select unselective uh, because uh, when we want to separate the feed suppose we were separating natural gas CH4 from the impurity CO2 or H2S. So, it is uh, like it allows along with natural gas CH4 and other hydrocarbon it allows also CO2 plus H2S to pass through. Uh, or for example, you can take the example of uh, air if we want to separate it into oxygen and nitrogen. So, I mean if you allow air to pass through this membrane and suppose we just consider that this is selective towards uh, oxygen, selective towards oxygen mean it allows oxygen to pass through mainly, uh, but uh, with this some nitrogen will also pass through this system. So, that is become I mean that make it like unselective. Uh, that is allowing other component which we were looking to be separated that also pass through this. So, this was the problem of unselectivity and they were also too expensive mean uh, it is expensive to build these system. So, when you have compared these uh, main membranes with the other technologies existing system like uh, distillation, absorption and liquid liquid extraction or <coughs> uh, some other techniques. So, compared to them these four problems were present in membranes. But with the passage of time in uh, these problem has been solved and in the last 40 years more or less uh, you can see I think your book refer half a century. Uh, so, based on that actually the membranes have been developed and uh, their performance has become better. So, they are being commonly used in the industries now. So, here is a brief history of the membranes. So, when you look at the membrane, so uh, where they have been used and when they have been used. So, uh, you can see their uh, first industrial use of the membrane was in like 1940 and that was used for separation of uh, 
uh, uranium components uh, that was in the form of uranium fluoride I think and uh, you have separated two isotopes of mm. uranium through this. So, here you can see this 1940, what is important about this year? So, if you remember this is uh, the time of World War II and at that time mostly you will look here, uh, there is also another uh, main year in which uh, actually the most of somehow uh, development took place. So, in that uh, time this industrial use of this membrane took place and you have separated uranium isotopes with the help of membrane. So, that was first industrial use of membrane. And then like in mid 1960 uh, reverse osmosis with the cellulose acetate, I mean uh, reverse osmosis is one of the membrane separation technique uh, which we have to discuss in detail. So, in that you have used mem a cellulose acetate membrane. Now, cellulose acetate is actually material of construction of those membrane, reverse osmosis is the phenomena in which you have used cellulose acetate membrane and uh, they were used first time in the mid 1960. Uh, they were used for purification of sea water, uh, so it becomes available or I mean suitable for drinking purpose. And the first time here, I mean, through from this sea water solids were reduced to like 500 ppm TDS, mean total dissolved solids. Uh, so, they were reduced to less than 500 ppm, and with the help of this, when they are less than 500, usually this water is drinkable. But actually, uh, in sea water, if you look at the sea water, so that contains very high amount of these uh, total dissolved solid. They are uh, somehow in the range of uh, I think 30,000 ppm to 50,000 ppm mostly. Uh, so, they are reduced too high. You can see here that now uh, these membrane reduce those from maybe 30,000 or somehow I mean they, this is very big value. So, to say 500 ppm. So, this was first. Uh, uh, industrial use of cellulose acetate for cleaning of water, sea water. Then uh, there is one type of membrane ultrafiltration like this is also one type reverse osmosis. So, ultrafiltration this is based on actually their size, pore size ultrafiltration then you will here I think see uh, something called microfiltration uh, somewhere may be mentioned or that that is also one type. So, ultrafiltration was also followed in like 1960 after this reverse osmosis somehow that was also used on industrial scale I mean that uh, membrane was also used. Then there were hollow fiber uh, polysulfone membrane, polysulfone now again one of the polymer uh, I mean with the help of that uh, some uh, these hollow fiber membranes were formed and they were used for separating the gas mixture first time and uh, that gas mixture was actually hydrogen and CO2 mixture. Uh, so, uh, that this membrane were used for their enriching or uh, their I mean separation. And then uh, their uh, I mean commercial commercialization of alcohol dehydration bar by par vaporation. A par vaporation is one of uh, the technique in membrane. Again, we will talk about this in detail later on. This is the part of I mean this study, this chapter. Uh, so, in that actually also here we ac actually what we do alcohol dehydration what does this mean like removal of water from alcohol. So, through power vaporation. So, overall you can see you will see in this technique uh, actually we have a membrane as well here vaporization is taking place. So, based on this we have a power vaporation uh, named it as power vaporation. So, dehydration uh, uh, from alcohol we remove the water. So, through this technique and that took place in light, uh, like late 1980s. Also in 1980s the application of membrane separation to bioprocesses took place and uh, if you will look at the literature I mean in this era also a lot of development took place and I think it was the time of like Arab Israel war I think and in that uh, time many developments took place. So, like they were also used for bioprocesses and in bioprocessing actually what you do you separate the uh, some high proteins uh, they were also used for the separation or uh, main uh, separation of bacteria and yeast somehow. So, this is just brief introduction about 
uh, membrane separation in terms of like their development with the passage of time. So, as I said here there is some terminology like ultrafiltration, there is power vaporation, there is reverse osmosis and I, I was talking about also microfiltration. So, do not worry about these, these we have to define later on, I um, mean just uh, because this is introductory lecture and some of the uh, terminologies will not be clear to you, but we will talk about them in detail actually later on. Uh, so, but just from here remember that they were developed you know that with the passage of time. Uh, so, if we want to replace uh, other I mean separation operation with the membrane, so they that can be beneficial to save energy as well as uh, with in terms of cost actually uh, one slide back we talked about this that in the initial stages membrane were not like reliable, they were slow, they were expensive, but with the passage of time many improvements has taken place as well their price has reduced and they will uh, they have become more reliable due to this they are being used on industrial scale but still uh, i mean there are some problem like they require high mass transfer flux mass transfer flux mean actually as we said that we have to uh, pass components through the membrane so they should provide good flux based on selectivity like they should be selective for one component and they should allow i uh, mean good mass transfer of that component through the membrane as well they should be defect free and long life membrane on the large scale i uh, mean these are some requirements like they should be defect free they should be uh, they should have long life because if you will study the membrane you will see that most of the time membrane still in the industry is you have to replace the membrane maybe after one or two year or sometime it depends on the application maybe after a few months. So, that is the problem if uh, you are I mean just replacing membrane after every few months. So, that will become expensive process. So, if we can design such membranes which provide good flex and they are also long lasting. So, that can be good replacement of other separation processes on large scale. Uh, as well uh, the other requirement is like you, we should have uh, I mean built this membrane module into the compact and uh, their fabrication should be compact, compact mean actually they should have high surface area per unit volume. So, they occupy less space and overall their construction is easy. So, these then can be it can be advantageous as compared to the other separation technique which are commonly used in the industries. Uh, at the same time uh, this replacement also requires something considerable pretreatment of the process feed. Uh, what does this mean actually when you pass some components through the membrane you are looking for the separation through the membrane. Sometime cake formation cake mean one uh, layer of the cake f take place on the surface of membrane I can give you the example here like in the lab like we have seen lab scale separation through the funnel mean you are passing uh, your solution and that is separated into like. Uh, uh, I mean solid and the liquid. So, uh, the solid which is left over on the surface of filter what you call it cake those crystals are named as cake actually. So, that same can take place on the surface of membrane when you are passing uh, some of uh, those components through the membrane. So, if like look at the water containing salt. So, water pass through and if salts are retained on the surface they can form cake there and that cake can actually plug and as well foul the surface of that uh, membrane. So, membrane should be such that it did not allow these cake formation as well as plugging and fouling because if this takes place this will definitely deteriorate and degrade the quality as well it will create difficulty in the separation. Uh, because if some cake is formed on the surface of membrane maybe you will need now more pressure to pass your liquid through this. So, that will add on operational cost. So, in order to avoid those problem membranes are being designed in such a way that uh, these problem can be minimized. Uh, I mean you cannot eliminate them, but you can reduce them. So, these are some requirements uh, which can help us to replace all other separation processes with these membrane. If we can design some membrane which allow good selectivity, good flex as well they are I mean long lasting, they can be compact and 
they did not allow the formation of these uh, plugs or cakes on its surface. So, overall when we look at the industrial application of membranes, so they can be divided actually into the 6 subgroups and those subgroup include like uh, there is reverse osmosis, then ultrafiltration, microfiltration, then there is gas separation per vaporation and then electrodialysis and actually all these are used for some specific application. Uh, so, kindly go through the chap table 14.1 of your textbook and there you will see specific industrial example for all of these main categories you will see that uh, they are being used from for some specific application all of those. Uh, he has provided us various example that this is used for this purpose, this purpose and so on. Uh, so, overall like for example, if we say gas separation, so that is used for like natural gas separation as well where are, there are various other examples uh, of its industrial application. So, reverse osmosis that is used for usually water uh, I mean cleaning in the form of like maybe water ground water uh, even cleaning as well uh, like sea water. Uh, so, many other you will look at I mean for all of these techniques. So, kindly go through that table and uh, just remember few of those uh, for example, at least you should remember one of one or two for each of these techniques. So, that is it uh, up to here actually today uh, I have introduced you only with the separation through the barrier and membrane is one of those barrier actually we started with the very common example which we have discussed earlier in the semester in the start. So, uh, through those were actually usually the filters like water filter there is a filter inside lab which you use uh, as well there were air filter some oil filter. So, then we jump towards membrane. So, membrane are also a barrier, but uh, they are main working in a bit different way like they can be porous, they can be non porous. Uh, most of the filter when you see filters are actually porous but membranes can be porous as well as non porous. So, here size based separation as well as some other phenomena like based on diffusion separation can take place. Uh, so, then we have uh, generally look at this that when uh, you are separating the feed through the membrane that is separated in retentate and permeate. We have defined those and uh, also we have looked at some of the industrial example when membrane uh, started developing and uh, some of the problem which membrane face still facing. Uh, so, then at the end we have seen that membrane application are actually divided into the 6 categories on industrial scale and they are uh, I mean they have different names uh, actually they have different application and uh, then from here inshallah we will continue in the next lecture uh, I mean about this industrial application. Thank you so much.